Trinity, one God, who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. God, for whom we wait, in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend to creation. We find our sense of self in material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and we turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving God in Christ Jesus hath looked with favor upon you, and through the power of the Holy Spirit your sins are forgiven, you are made children of the Most High God, inheritors of the eternal promise, and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. Amen. We sing like one candle. Let us pray. 
Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that hinders our faith, that eagerly we may receive your promises, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Las Posadas was first celebrated in 1587 in a parish in Mexico as a contrast to the celebration of the native Mexicans, the Aztecs, who used on that day to celebrate their war god. It was a tradition that quickly spread throughout Latin America as well as to the United States. It is an eight day long celebration starting December 16th and ending on December 24th, ending with midnight mass. It remembers Mary and Joseph as they arrived in Bethlehem and their search for shelter and a place for Mary to give birth to Jesus, the savior of the world. And so for this celebration, families and musicians process from home to home, singing, looking for a place to belong. The celebration of Las Posadas is especially poignant this year, I think. Because of the pandemic and economic conditions, we've seen an increase of those who are unhoused. And we have watched refugees from Afghanistan and other countries flee from their homes and neighborhoods seeking safety for their families. On the night he was born, our Lord found no shelter from the cold at night. And as a young child, he became a refugee when his family fled to Egypt to escape Herod's murderous wrath. And so in the faces of those in need, we see Jesus, who told us, whatever you do to the least of these, you do unto me. Las Posadas reminds us that each of us is the innkeeper who decides if there's room for Jesus. Oh 
Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. This was the time. And the census required that every man go to his own village to be enrolled. Now that meant that Joseph had to go to Bethlehem. He came from Bethlehem. He was a very poor man. He couldn't get work there. So he had to go up to Nazareth to get employment. And now he had to go back to be enrolled. But Mary didn't have to go. She wasn't from Bethlehem. And I think if Joseph had fully understood the situation, he wouldn't have taken her. But we can see how poor he was. He couldn't engage anyone to look after her. And the couple must have been looked down upon because nobody volunteered to look after Mary while he was gone. And she didn't want to be troublesome. She put things in order and they started out. Now the pictures always show her riding on a donkey, but there is no donkey in the Gospels. She who might have gone in a golden chariot with angels to attend her, went on foot and trudged her way across the snow of the Galilean and Judean hills. And as they approached Bethlehem, Joseph was saying, oh, it's gonna be all right, we'll be among relatives. Fine idea that was. This is the prayer for Posadas. Divine and eternal word, who descended from the Father into the heart of Mary, your love for humankind leads you to Bethlehem, where you were born at midnight in a poor and humble stable. In truth, thousands of angels accompany you on this journey, and yet we who you came to save and lead to that Bethlehem of eternal joy stubbornly turn away from you. Forgive us, God, Lord of the universe, and help us to walk alongside Mary and Joseph, thus giving us the courage to fight against and triumph over every adversity. Amen. <laughs>
so often we do not recognize you in our midst, in the faces of those around us. Open our eyes and help us keep watch for the signs of your gracious, gracious love with which you fill our world and our lives each day. Amen. Baby inside and I 
you in the hungry and thirsty, the stranger and the imprisoned, in every person in need of compassion and hope. Open our hands so we might do your work of bringing good news to all people. Amen. And Mary laid him in a manger. Why a manger? Because she didn't have a cradle. She didn't have anything. No warm water, no cold water, no pan, no towels, no table. Nothing that our German women have at such a time. I marvel that the little fella didn't freeze to death. And I don't know how Mary knew what to do. She'd never had a baby before. And don't think it didn't hurt her. She was flesh and blood. And then when he was before them, what did they do? The pictures always show them kneeling in adoration. We may be sure that they looked with wonder and joy on this gift God had given. And let us also gather about his crib as we do when one of our children is born. How fair is the maid, how lovely is the child, and what is more disarming than the maid? See him smile as he plays upon the breasts of his mother. Look upon him and know that in this little child is all your hope, your joy, your comfort, your salvation. Now, if I would have been God and wanted to save the world, I wouldn't have done it this way. I would have just called in the devil and twisted his nose and said, let my people go. But God is amazing. He sends a little baby as weak as an earthworm lying in the feed box of a donkey, and that little baby crushes the devil's back and overcomes all the powers of hell, sin, and death. We sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem. <clears throat>
sea and took on the flesh and blood of the baby who cried for his mother's breast. Open our hearts to receive this gift of Emmanuel, God with us and for us, and open our lives to share you with this world you so love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Welcoming God, may we be reminded that like Mary and Joseph at the inn, Jesus is standing outside our door waiting for an invitation to enter. Mira que estoy la puerta y llamo, si alguno oye mi voz y abre la puerta, entrare y sendare con él y él conmigo. Listen, I am standing at the door knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and eat with you and you with me. Lord, teach us to respond to all those in need standing just outside our door. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Welcoming God, may we have the courage to respond to those who are knocking in the way you have taught us. Ama al Señor tu Dios, con todo tu corazón, con todo tu ser, y con todo tu mente. Ama a tu prójimo como a tu ti mismo. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Take us by our hand, God of compassion, when we are paralyzed by our fears and unable to step out in boldness. In the midst of a resurgent pandemic, give us courage to walk confidently with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Show your righteousness, God of justice, that all who are oppressed and marginalized, forgotten and cast aside, would be given voice by elected leaders and compassionate citizens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abundant God, be with those of us that need your restoration and healing. We ask your blessing upon Julie and Francis. We also lift up to you those we bring before you with our lips or within the quietness of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the, all, the, peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let's share that piece. <laughs> our worship continues by receiving our morning's tithes and offerings. The God who came in flesh in the babe of Bethlehem now comes to us in the bread and wine of this holy sacrament. You need not be a Lutheran nor a member of this congregation in order to receive, but come, for this is the gift of Christmas. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our delight that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <clears throat>
betrayed our Lord Jesus, took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drinks, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We boldly pray the prayer the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And in this us not are the gifts of God for the people of God.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Joy to the world, 267. Thank <laughs> you.